Hello, Saints. This is Dr. Francis Miles, your host for the Order of Melchizedek television show right on this global uh, Christian television network going around the world, touching lives with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, you want to deviate this program because I know we are the one of the few programs, if any, in the world today that are focused on teaching the body of Yeshua how to operate in the Melchizedek priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the royal priesthood of all believers. Praise the living God. Now, since we have a powerful conclusion to our series on tithing today, that's coming right, that's coming up in a little while, but I want you to watch this and then I'll be right back to conclude our series on tithing under the order of Melchizedek. Amen. for them to choose Jesus over Barabbas. But she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption. That Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death. Because a normal death does not do anything for you and I. There should not be any effect of death on any part of your life. The actual sign of Pentecost is the power of authorized utterance at a higher level where your words pierce the hearts of people and they can't shake the impression of what you created. If you're up against principalities and powers en contra de principados and knocking you around, y el enemigo te está dando contra ti, put praise on in your car. Pon alabanza. Put praise on Por, in your house. You see, God wants you to know today that he wants to pull you somewhere that maybe you don't know what it looks like, but it looks a whole lot better than wherever you at right now. God never changes his mind. He just may take you out of a spot that you should have been in that would have been easier for you, but he'll always put you right exactly where you're supposed to be. God wants you to know it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but your spirit is going to raise up in you. And he's going to take you right through that mountain. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. No matter what's happened, my God is faithful. No matter what I feel, my God is going to come through. No matter what they say, my God is going to show up. No matter what I think, my God is on time. He's always been on time. He's never early. He's never late. My God is going to show up. So whatever you do, do everything you can do in your power by the Holy Ghost to join us downtown Atlanta in the month of October. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be happening. It's going to be a powerful meeting for the God encounter. We're going to be wrestling with the theme of transforming nations through the gospel of the kingdom with a powerful ensemble of powerful global speakers and uh, worship leaders. It's going to be phenomenal. Praise God. Well, welcome to the conclusion of our series on tithing under the order of Melchizedek. If you have not seen part two, uh, part one, part two, and part three, you all, do yourself a favor. Go to our YouTube channel, Francis Miles International, or on our Facebook page, Dr. Francis Miles, and catch up, catch up on what you have missed. Because this has been a very dynamic series on a powerful subject that all that a lot of believers wrangle with around the world. 
is tithing for today? If it is for today, how should you collect it? There are so many issues with that, with that subject. But I tell you, when you fully understand the spirit behind tithing, the reason why God ordained it, it's a whole different story. Because understand, God is love. And when love puts an ordinance together, it is not against you. It is for you. It's just understanding tithing in its proper etymology that people have needed to understand. And tithing did not begin with Levi or Malachi. It began with Melchizedek. You know, and so we need to understand it from that perspective. And it's a game changer. I cannot tell you how many people from around the world have emailed our ministry to thank me for teaching on tithing under the order of Melchizedek. Some were tithing, but they were not seeing a lot of fruit from it. As soon as they shifted and began to tithe with the mindset that they are tithing under the order of Melchizedek and tithing for the reasons we have outlined, things began to happen in their life. In the, and some of them had given up completely on the practice only to re-engage because now it's exciting. Now they really understand it, you know, what it means and what it entails. So if you did not listen to part one, part two, and part three, you really want to catch up so that you can really connect the dots. So today we, we are in part four of tithing under the order of Melchizedek. Please turn with me in your Bibles uh, to Hebrews chapter 7 where we have been for the, most, for the most part. Hebrews chapter 7 is a, is a prophetic and apostolic summary of the encounter that Abraham has with the, with the mysterious priest by the name of Melchizedek in Genesis 14. Now understand that the, uh, the, the, the theologians say that the, Old Test, uh, that, the, that the New Testament is hidden in the Old Testament. Uh, and, yet, and then the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. So it's really an interesting uh, scenario when you see this because there are details that are added to the encounter uh, that, that Abraham had with Melchizedek that you do not find in Genesis 14. There is an interpretation of the whole encounter, its ramifications. That's why I love the book of Hebrews chapter 7. So, so it says this, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who made Abraham returning from the the slaughter, of the, the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, or the king of Shalom. He was without father, without mother, that means he had no human parentage, takes him out of the realms of humans. Without genealogy, having neither beginning of days or end of life, takes him out of the realm of the, angel, of the angelic. Because angels are maybe eternal in their state, but they're not, they are the beginning. Nevertheless, they were created in the realms of eternity, in the celestial realms, by God's word. You know, so they are the beginning. But this one is without beginning, or day or end of life. But may the Son of God, he remains a priest continually, which, which uh, 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 only leads us to the, to the probable conclusion that, that, that Melchizedek, who appeared to Abraham, is a theophany of, of Jesus Christ or Yeshua Jesus before the incarnation. In theology, the appearance of Christ in the Old Testament is called a theophany. It's an Old Testament appearance of the Godhead before the incarnate birth of the Son of God in the womb of Mary. Now, verse 4. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abram gave a tenth of the spoils. So in other words, one of the reasons why Abram gave him tithe is because he considered his greatness. He realized that the stature, the spiritual stature of this priest was so lofty, it was so out of this world, that Abram, who had no choice but to honor this stature, to honor this difference in stature between them. You see, my friend, this is amazing. The tithing recognizes a difference in stature. You know, and Abram ties into him because he knows that when you, are, when you get blessed, you owe, you want to, when you really want to get blessed, you have to understand that blessing is in the difference between the stature, your stature, and the stature of the one that's blessing you. This is why it's dangerous to have, to have, to have everybody in your, on your level. Because you see, if everybody in your life is on your level, spiritually speaking, then nobody can take you to the next dimension. It's in the difference of stature that the movement begins to happen in the realm of the spirit. So Abraham recognized that there's a difference in stature between himself and this priest of God, Mosai, and he ties into that difference. And, and we know that because of that, doing that, the Bible says Melchizedek was able to bless him, Abraham, who had the promises. So there's something about tithing 
that causes uh, the anointing of God to come upon the things God has promised us so that they can begin to be driven in the direction of being fulfilled. I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of just having prophecy books full of prophecies that never come to pass. I mean, I mean, who cares if somebody told, prophesied, you are going to have a, you are going to have a, you, you, you're going to be, you're going to have a, have a house dead free. If you never come into the house, it means nothing. And that's what I come across so many believers who have got powerful prophetic promises from God and came from bona fide prophets, but somehow the problem is there's a gap in between the prophecy and its fulfillment. Well, the Melchizedek order comes and stands between the prophecy or the promise and the fulfillment. That gap, you know, that's why the priesthood steps in there because Abraham tithe into the priesthood. It legitimizes the ability of the priesthood to take the promise into a place of divine fulfillment. I don't know about you, but I can tell you, ever since I began to tithe into the order of Melchizedek, what I've found in my life is nothing but the spirit of divine fulfillment. A lot of the things that were prophesied upon my life in 1989, 1990, 19, that's a long time ago. My God, they have been here, they have been just coming to pass one after the other. It's like, my God, God, I thought you forgot about that. And then God began to bring it together. So there's something to be said about that. Praise the living God. So even as you are listening to me right now, maybe this teaching is all for you. Maybe you have been crying, God, I don't get it. I don't get it. I've got so powerful, I've got some powerful prophecies that came over my life. I know that if they ever came to pass, my whole life will change completely. Do you know that when Abraham left the land of the Chaldeans in, 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 in Genesis chapter 14, he left with the faith promise. God said, leave your father's country, your, your, your father's house and your father's country and go to a land that I'm going to show you and I will make you great and I will make you a blessing. Now, how many know that anytime you use the word I will in the English language, that is a promissory note. You are making a promise, but you see, in other words, if I say to somebody, I am going to give you a car. Nobody leaves the building saying the car has been given. They leave the building knowing a promise has been made. But nobody's going to say, oh, you know what, the mouse promised so, uh, Susie is going to give her, is going to buy a car, you know, so she drove off the parking lot with the car. Nobody thinks that. There, there's an expectation created in the, in the, in the hearts of the hearers that there will come a day when what I promise will become fulfilled in the life of that particular person. So God says, I leave your father's country, leave the land of their Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. Then I will make you great. I will bless you. So I will is a promissory note. So we have to ask ourselves the question, when did, God, when did Abraham, God's I will in Abraham's life become, 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 here it is. When did I will bless you become I have blessed you? Well, it happened, the, the writer of the Hebrews is telling us it happened when Abraham had an encounter with Melchizedek in the Valley of Chavez, the same time when the tithe was born, when Abraham tithed into Melchizedek, Melchizedek. It was at that time that Melchizedek blessed Abraham. Actually, he opened his, his mouth with these words, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High. So the first thing out of the mouth of the Melchizedek order was that, Abraham, that the priest of God blessed Abraham. Now, this is important. When I teach tithing under the order of Melchizedek, I tell the people this. This is a significant, there's a huge significant difference between tithing under the Malachi model, where you are always tithing to get blessed. It's insinuated. If you don't tithe, you get cursed. If you don't tithe, you'll do that. This is going to happen, okay? So the blessing is always reactive to your tithing. But you see, in the Melchizedek order, when, when, when uh, Melchizedek arrives on, on the scene, the first thing out of his mouth is to bless Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of God Mosai. And then Abraham tithe, reacted to that blessing and he tithe into it. So here's the difference. Under the order of Melchizedek, we do not tithe to get blessed. We tithe because we are already blessed. This is so powerful. It's a whole different mentality. You are not tithing to get blessed. We are tithing to recognize we are already blessed. Okay. And, and, and the Bible tells us in the book of, 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 of Ephesians, I believe, verse 1 and 3, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. We have already been blessed. I'm so blessed, I cannot help it but tithe. I'm so blessed, I can't help it but recognize the priesthood that has put me in a blessed position. Friends, it's a whole different mentality when you are tithing because you already know you're blessed than tithing to get blessed. Because if you're tithing to get blessed, it means the blessing is always ahead of you, never on you. But when you're tithing out of knowing I'm already blessed, every time you tithe, you are enforcing, reinforcing 
the statement, the divine posture in the spirit that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that you are already blessed. It's a whole different mentality, a whole different uh, understanding of grace. You know, it's a different uh, 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 empowerment in uh, uh, psychologically thinking, spiritually thinking, because you are reinforcing what you already have. And when you reinforce what you already have, what you proclaim you already have, the stronger it becomes. You see, if you keep saying, I'm a fool, foolishness will grow inside of you. If you keep enforcing, I am blessed, I am blessed, blessing will grow inside of you. It's the nature of the law of attraction. You know, it's the nature of the law of confession, you know, that you, sh that, 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 that you shall eat from the fruit of your lips. It's very, very important. Since I'm telling you, this is some powerful stuff that God is releasing now. Now listen, I've got a lot more to do before I conclude, but I want you to check this out, and then I'll be right back to conclude this message. And I've written a powerful book that I believe will change your life. My first prayer book. After many years of study, and looking at human phenomenon and praying for people in healing and deliverance, this book has finally come together. The book is loaded, my friend, with dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers because any prayer that works for you is a dangerous prayer to the devil. Well, this book is loaded with 36 different types of prayers on 36 different types of evil altars we have identified that many people deal with around the world. The name of the book is Dangerous Prayers from the Courts of Heaven that destroy evil altars. For more information on this book, visit at dangerousprayersbook.org and order your copy today at dangerousprayersbook.org. And as a TV offer to our viewers, for a donation of $35 or more, we will send you Dr. Francis Miles' life-changing book as our appreciation for sawing into this ministry. Thanks. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry the way you do. We thank God for people like you. So those donation offers, when you respond to them, you allow us to keep doing what we're doing now. If you're being blessed by this revelation, this ministry, then thank you so much for responding to the donation offers because it's what it will take for us to keep doing what we're doing. Praise God. Now listen, in the conclusion of our, of our teaching on tithing under the order of Melchizedek, I just want to address those who may say, oh my God, the amounts, I don't think that tithing is New Testament. You know, I, I, and, and my answer to that is simple. Listen, you know, yes, it's not New Testament if you ignore what Jesus said about it in the, in the Gospels. Yes, it's not New Testament if you take the entire book of Hebrews and you just trash it down the toilet. Here's the bottom line. Instead of fighting so hard to try to eliminate what's clearly a principle of the kingdom of God, you know, that is found in every aspect of creation, what you need to be doing is asking God for grace, the grace to do it. You see, in life, you know, the thing that is most important in life is grace. Because grace is the power of God to allow us to do what must be done without feeling like it's killing us, without feeling like, we, without, do, without doing drudgery. You know, everything requires grace, okay? So, instead of trying to come up with theological, through, through, theological you know, quagmires, you know, trying to eliminate, you know, a, a, a modality of giving in the kingdom that is clearly taught in scripture. If, 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 if tithing in the order of Melchizedek was not important, there is no way the Holy Spirit would have gone out of his way to take it out of the Old Testament and bring it into the new and then take a lot of time explaining it. Explaining it. It is because it's, it has got present day New Testament applications. And understand when Abraham gave tithes of honor to Melchizedek in the valley of Shavis, he did not do it under the law because the law did not come until Mount Sinai. But even with the law, Jesus said this, do not think I've come to destroy the law, I've come to fulfill it. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. You know, but the reality of the matter is anywhere worse you go in the world, thou shalt not kill still stands. Go to a country where, where, where thou shalt not kill has been eliminated. And trust me, you will not live there a day. You will take your family quickly out of there. You'll be demanding the restoration of the law. I mean, I mean, go to a place. 
you know, go to a place where any of the Ten Commandments is to completely ignored and see how equitable that country is. See how civil and livable a country like that is. It is a jungle. You run out of that country looking for countries where the Ten Commandments are honored. Because it, the, the, the law, it, it, it's impossible to eliminate the law of God. The law of God is spiritual. The only difference is we could not fulfill it in our own flesh power. But we got a man called Jesus who fulfilled it for us. So when we are in Christ, we, Christ becomes for us the fulfillment of the law, not the abolishing of it. The fulfillment of the law because we are in Christ Jesus. You know, that's important for us to understand. But most importantly, I want to read you another verse here in Hebrews 7. Dealing with that. Hebrews 7, when the Bible is talking about tithing into the order of Melchizedek, you know, as that, that Ab what Abram did, it says this in this, uh, verse, uh, verse 5, And indeed those who are the sons of Levi who receive the, or the, or the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law that is from their brethren, though they come from the loins of Abraham. Verse 6, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who are the promises. Now, if you end here, then tithing, tithing under the order of Mechizedek becomes historical, you know, a, a, an inflection in time, okay? But yet, the next verses beg to disagree. The next verses make tithing present tense. Make, it brings it into the now. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. And then in verse 8, it says here, mortal men received tithes. Remember, the book of Hebrews was written before 70 AD. What happened in 70 AD? The temple was destroyed in Jerusalem. You know, that's why when you go to Israel, on the temple mount, you find a mosque. But before, it was not like that. There was a temple of God, okay? But it was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. And Jesus Christ prophesied it. But before 70 AD, Hebrews was written. So in Jerusalem, what, what did you say? You saw the Levites still doing the temple practices because they had not acknowledged Jesus Christ as a final sacrifice. They continued with business as usual as if Yeshua had not died on the cross. So you could look at them and see people going to them, offering animal sacrifices, giving tithes. tithes. So, so the writer of Hebrews says, says this, here, where, here in Israel, mortal men receive tithes. What is he still receiving tithes? But then it goes singular. So, singular. But there, where? In heaven. There, he receives them. So thou, tithing, there is a place where there is a he who receives the tithe. Who receives the tithe. There he receives the tithe. Now, the Bible wants us to be clear about who the he is. So we are not confused about who the he is. So there is no ambiguity who the he is referring to. It's referring to Jesus. Why? Not what it says. It says this. But there... He receives them. That word receiving is a continuous receiving right now. Right now. He is receiving. He receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. He receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Who lives? Jesus. Why would you say he lives? Because he died. And on the third day he was raised from the dead. So the expression he lives is reference to the resurrection of Jesus. It's so it is the he now who receives the tithe in heaven. He receives the tithe in heaven. Of whom it has been witnessed, he lives. This is powerful. It is powerful. So we know that tithing under the order of Melchizedek is a powerful thing. It's a powerful technology for God encounter. But what you need is not to try to eliminate it. What you need is grace. Ask God for grace to tithe graciously. Without compulsion, without manipulation, but out of love, adoration, and intimacy and honor. Like, God, I can't believe that I've caught another day. Lord, I can't believe that you give me so much. Because remember, while you're fighting over tithe, the truth of the matter is, in the kingdom, nobody has ownership. King, see, kingdoms have no ownership. There's no private ownership in kingdoms. The king owns everything in the kingdom. That means that makes every kingdom citizen a, a steward of the king. Nobody owns anything. So the truth of the matter is what you're fighting, you fighting over the tithe. Understand God owns it all. He owns it all. And yet, he uses the tithe to judge our stewardship, our faithfulness to God, 
our understanding of the kingdom. But also he uses, he uses that tithe as a legal landing strip, as, a legal, as, as an altar that you create in your giving that allows God to come into your money and clean it up, intercept what's trying to come through your money. I mean, like we have read said in other, pro, in other programs that have gone before us. Please, re, go through all three shows and I'm telling you, you'll be greatly blessed in Jesus' matter name. If you're not a partner with that ministry, what are you waiting for? Go to francismouse.com and become a partner with this ministry. It's a great ministry to be partnered with. Miracle signs and wonders happen to people when they give to this ministry. Oh yes, I know that. Because around the world we get those testimonies of lives changed, people healed. Just by sowing, just becoming a partner, associating with themselves with this grace that God has given to us by the Spirit of God. Now listen, I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next broadcast. Please DVR these TV shows because I'm telling you, it's happening here. Powerful things are going to be released on this altar. So keep tuning in. We love you. Friends, listen. I am excited whenever I get this moment to be able to tell you about some of my other life-changing teachings that unfortunately cannot appear on television. You said, Dr. Mouse, why? Because there's no time. These, these revelations are so life-changing. They are so intense. They deserve the time to break them piece by piece so your life can be changed. I have such a teaching on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook. This teaching is entitled Tithing for Divine Interception. My God, Tithing for Divine Interception. Whenever have you ever been told that your tithe could be used by God to create a supernatural climate of divine interception in your life? What do I mean by divine interception? Well, divine interception simply means God gets to you before the devil can take you out. How do you like that? See, the problem with many of us, God is coming to rescue us. God is tired of coming into rescue missions on our behalf because we are already in trouble. But you see, what about if God could intercept us, get to us before the devil can take us out? What about if I told you that tithing under the order of Melchizedek was divine to create a climate of divine interception for you and your family. My God, I'm telling you, it will change your life. So check this out. There is not enough time for me to break it down right here on this powerful TV network that I enjoy. And I'm thankful we are on this TV network and you are following us. Thank you for that. But I'm telling you, there's some goodies that are not on this network right now. If you go to Francis Mouse International on YouTube, subscribe. You never miss these teachings. And then you go to Facebook, Dr. Francis Mouse, go to my page, follow. I tell you, you will not miss anything I'm doing on those social media platforms, including this message. You can hear the whole of it. And I'm telling you, I, and I promise you this, you'll be happy that I talked about it because it will change your life. Amen.